Hi, I'm George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta, and today we're going to do a driving test of a 914. This car is in pretty great shape, but I'm going to tell you about different faults as we look around this car and drive it of all of the various 914s, so you'll get a good idea of what to look for when you're test driving the car. The first thing we want to do before actually driving the car is check various things, and I will start with the tires. 914s have four-wheel independent suspension, and if you have tires that are too wide on the car or not of the right inflation, it'll radically affect the way the car handles. Alignment for a 914 is critical. So I looked at these tires already. They're 195, 65, 15 on the factory wheel. That is the widest tire that you want to put on a 5.5 wheel. If it's any wider, such as a 20560, the car will wobble as you go around the corners as the sidewall will flex because there's too much of it's bulging out away from the tire. Another note is that don't ever put a P-rated tire on your 914. That's a passenger tire and it's got a very, very soft sidewall which will flex even more. So you go into a corner and the car wobbles and you wonder why it's not handling the way it should. The car was originally equipped with 165-15 tires which worked very, very well in the 5.5 rim. Next thing we want to do, and I'm not getting into alignment, I'm going to do that in another video, is we can check the wheel bearings and the shocks. I'm going to quickly check the shock absorbers by doing the old bounce test. And when you push down on it, it should come up and stay. And that, that felt good. Uh, gas shocks push down hard and come up hard. But this one, pushes down softly the way it should and comes up and stays. And then I'm going to check the rear. And these are a little stiffer than the fronts, but also good. Shocks are good. Coney shocks, when they get old, they actually freeze. So you're trying to push on the fender and the, the sidewall flexes. You know right then the shock is frozen and the car is going to bounce down the road. Uh, instantly, Coney shocks, bad. And then I'm going to grab a hold of the tire and I'm going to wiggle it like that, watching the sidewall flex as well as seeing if there's any wheel bearing play. If there's wheel bearing play, the wheel will knock as you roll it in and out. Then I'm going to generally look at the car, at the rake of the car, and I see that this car is a little bit lower in the front than the rear. The car should be perfectly even. You can put a level in the door jam and watch the bubble. Make sure the car is level. If it's too low in the front, it's going to bump steer, meaning it's going to shake the wheel every time you hit a bump and it won't handle as well as it should. And the front adjustment is very, very easy just by turning the bolt at the back of the torsion bar to raise the car a little bit and then recheck the uh, left and right height with a level. Also, factory specs are in the Tech Tips book, and you can measure that to get your car back to factory height. In the rear, too many people have replaced too many different kinds of springs, which upset the handling as well. So, say somebody put 140-pound uh, springs in here with a re rear sway bar. Well, the car will be turned from handling neutrally to having the rear end come around in a corner and be very, very dangerous and disconcerting. So we want to make sure that the car is equipped in its factory uh, original configuration. That's something to really note. And you can look up under the car at the bottom of the rear shock bolt and see if a sway bar has been installed. And in this case, it has not. But I can see that there are white KYB shocks. And that's the reason that the rear is a little stiffer than the front. Next, what we want to do is check all of the lights because we're going to go on the road here and uh, we want to make sure that the car is street legal. So we turn the key on, turn the headlights on, they come up right away. We look at all of the lights all the way around. You have to have the key on for the headlights to come up, but not the parking lights. Side markers are working. Turn signals all look like they're working. Driving lights come on only at low beam, believe it or not. These are fog lights, not driving lights, so it's more of a, uh, an accessory rather than something that actually functions. 35-watt bulb work in low beams. 
key is on, I'm going to pull the switch and driving lights are on, on low beam like they should be. I'm going to switch from high to low beam. High to low beam works. If you notice that one of the beams goes out, that's not necessarily a bad beam. It's, it takes four fuses to do left low, right low, left high, right high. So it could be just a loose fuse and that's not uh, a bad bulb. So we need to watch that. Go to the back and I check the lights here. Outboard side marker works. Running light works. Running light works. Outboard side marker works. Uh, the backup lights don't work without the key on, but I'm going to do that. But I'm going to look at the license plate lights. Both of these work. You have to be very careful when replacing these. Too many people reverse the two wires and then the light grounds through the bumper and it burns the wiring harness. So you have to be very careful. Remember, brown is always ground. And then I'm going to turn the key on and I'm going to make sure that the brakes work. And we can see, I've been told that the brake lights work. And the backup lights. And then finally the turn signals. Left rear, right front. Right front, left rear. Well, turn signals are working. For the early cars with the dual arrows, the late cars only have one round indicator inside, but for the early cars with the dual arrows, if one arrow blinks and then they both blink, that usually means that the turn signal relay is bad if all four turn signals are working properly. So by installing a new turn signal relay, then the interior arrows will work properly. So I can assume, but I'm not going to, that the hazards are going to work since all the turn signals work. So I finally turn the hazards on. The hazards will work with key on or off. And I'm going around the car and all the hazards work. So I'm almost ready to drive this car. So the, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the clutch pedal here because too many people leave the cable out of adjustment which grinds out first gear. First gear should be totally slick and you should be able to go into first gear before you become to a complete stop. So I'm going to look at the pedal first and make sure it's all the way up at the top, which it is. Too many are down. If you can grab the pedal and pull it up, the clutch is out of adjustment and you could grind the gears. And then I'm going to wiggle it just a little bit to make sure it's got some free play in it, which this does. I would say this pedal's in perfect adjustment. So that's good. So finally, in general, I'm going to look at other safety issues like the interior rear view mirror should be four inches, the top of it four inches down from the chrome so I can see behind me. Uh, this car has had an optional factory mirror out on the right side so I know I've got good visibility. The mirrors are a little hard to adjust. That could be a problem. This is easily taken apart and lubricated. Make sure the engine grill is not going to pop up on me. I'm looking at the stance of the car right now. I see that this, the rear has some negative camber. It, the spec is 30 minutes negative camber. This looks like it's more than 30 minutes, which is not a bad thing for handling, but will affect tire wear. Front should be zero camber, which it looks like it probably is, although again, a little low. When the car gets low, the camber increases in the front as well, and it makes it harder to steer. Notice that the light is on over here. That is the curb light. And you can put, when you have the key in your pocket, this light will work or that light will work, dependent upon whether you are pushing the right or the left turn signal. That is meant as a warning if you park your car on the side of the road to passers-by that your car is there. A great thing that all of the European cars came up with, this curb light we call it. So don't think there's something wrong with your car. That's the way it's supposed to be. And now we're on to the driving test, the fun part. We're about to do our test ride, but one thing that's critical is always to bring a notepad. You can't remember everything you observe, so bring the notepad and write it down. So we're ready to go. Here we go. One thing I noticed right away before we even start the car is the door strap. Although it's intact, it doesn't notch and hold the door open because the bumps on it are worn. That's an easy replacement, but annoying, especially if you're going to get out on a hill and you want the door to stay open. And 
the interior door latch cup is loose. This is no big thing, but it requires taking the door panel off to tighten the two bolts. This car being a 1.8 is a very smooth running car, and you never want to depress the pedal in a 1.8 before starting it. And I am going to pull my seat belt out, but this one, as typically with older 914s, the seat belt is hard to pull forward. At least we know that the seat belt will catch when we need it. Make sure the car is in neutral. Uh, you don't really need to push the clutch in if the car is in neutral. By pushing the clutch in on these earlier cars when you're starting, you're taxing the clutch in the pressure plate forks. So I'm just going to leave it in neutral, make sure it's in neutral, and I'm going to hit the key again. I'm not pushing down on the pedal. I hear that fuel pump run. On the 1.8, the fuel pump should not run until the car is cranked. So the airflow meter has the little set of points misadjusted. When we start the car, it starts right away, which is good. Make sure that the oil light goes off, which it does. I'm going to look at the generator light. I'm going to rev it a little bit. This car is air conditioning. It's a little hard. Air conditioning in the console makes it a little hard, especially with larger feet, to get a firm push on the accelerator pedal. So that's going to be a little bit of a burden. Adjust my mirrors. They're all fine. And I can notice right away that the wide tires make this car a little bit hard to maneuver when you're at slow turning. I notch it into first gear and watch the tack. It's working just fine. Also, these odometers are notorious for stopping. The speedo seems to always work, the odometer doesn't, so you want to watch that as you're driving and make sure the odometer turns. A lot of people say the car has so many miles on it, but you just can't believe it. This says <clears throat> 39, and if the odometer turns, I would assume it to be 139, even though it's in great shape, and I see the odometer is turning already. So I wiggle the wheel a little bit at stop, and I can see that there's the tiniest little bit of play in the steering wheel. Rack and pinion should have no play at all on these cars, and usually the play is caused by the steering knuckle that's inside the cockpit right at the carpet. The console's blocking it, or I could show it to you. And all that means is we tighten up the bolt and we're on our way. That's nine times out of ten what the problem is, or even more, even a smaller percentage of, than that. Accelerate and watch the clutch action. Uh, the clutch is very, very smooth. If the car jitters a little bit, that means the clutch is worn and not smooth. Driving the car, I, I drive it first slowly, and then I put it in neutral, and I move the wheel one way and the other way, and I try. I listen for whining or humming in the back. If I hear whining or humming as I turn the wheel side to side, I know that I've got a bad rear wheel bearing. This doesn't seem to have that, so it's all right. And I feel the acceleration of the car. This is a 1.8, doesn't have a lot of power, but certainly sufficient. I feel the gears. This shifter is very tight. Go into the corner. Feels good. Hit the brakes, sort of hard. Take my foot off to make sure it stops straight, which it does. So I know we don't have a caliper sticking, and the brakes are working well. If you notice that you have to exert excessive brake pedal pressure, that's usually because the flex lines have clogged from years of use and need to be replaced. You should be able to lock up all four wheels without a problem. So we are at the stoplight. I see that it is idling a little bit high. Should idle at 950 RPM, which is no big thing. That can be adjusted. Carefully put it into first gear. Let the clutch out. Go through all the gears. I see the gear is very smooth. All of the gears are very, very smooth, which means the transmission is in excellent shape. If, as you upshift, it grinds into any gear that you upshift or downshift with a clutch and correct adjustment, that means that you have a transmission problem. And it's very expensive to address a transmission problem, although you can 
live with it if you have to. I can tell that this car has got KYBs because it bumps down the road. Those KYB shocks are very harsh. Great for racing or driving hard in the mountains by a young person, but not good for general driving of the 914. Again, I'm going to accelerate. I'm going to wait for this guy to make up his mind. Left or right lane. I guess he's going to do the left lane. Smooth all the way up in the gear. No miss. If the car misses or bucks, especially at the higher RPMs, it could be a bad set of points. So now I'm going to wiggle the wheel a little bit to check the handling and go like that and go like that and the car centers itself nicely so this car I can actually say is in pretty good alignment and we don't have to worry about the car mishandling on us many times when I do that the car takes off to one side or takes off to the other side or sways in the back and I have to immediately correct it I usually end up saying whoa because the car is not handling right but this car is pretty damn great if I do say so myself and then we come to a hard corner right here just pushing the car just a little bit to see So I'm impressed with this car, I really am. It handles well, it accelerates well, it's very, very smooth. It has a smooth transmission. Uh, one thing I'm noticing here uh, to note is that if you're sitting at a stoplight and you go to put it in first and it doesn't want to go into first, that doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with the transmission at all. Porsches are notorious for not going into first when you're at a stoplight people are behind you honking the horn you get nervous and then you grind it or try to bend one of the shift rods getting it into first the simple thing to do is to shift it into second or into reverse then back into first and you'll be all set don't think that it's a fault with the car I noticed the fresh air fan the fresh air fan on this car is working fine but if it doesn't what it usually is is the contacts are dirty people in the past have smoked the cigarette ashes drop down on the top of the fresh air fan connections and it stops working an easy fix by pulling the ashtray and cleaning the contacts so i'm really having fun with this car except the air conditioning and center console are too close to my big foot This is generally a great driving car. It would pass my approval. And don't feel free to drive these 914s in a spirited manner. Notice when I downshift, I don't go directly from one gear to the other. I hesitate momentarily, and I'll show you that again. I hesitate momentarily before I put it in the next gear. And I'm going to stop now so I can demonstrate what you shouldn't do. You shouldn't ever go like that because that won't let the synchros line up and it could grind the gear and wear out the gearbox. So just a quick two-point shift and you're all set. Just a momentary hesitation. Uh, the, the, the shifter will have just a little bit... We're in neutral now. The shifter in gear will have just a little bit of play even with good shifter bushings. But if it's really, really, really sloppy then you know that you've got a problem with one of the shifter bushings or even a loose set screw and that really should be checked. When the car shifter is in neutral, it should be centered on the console. That's the basic position before adjustment. This, this shifter is in good adjustment, but oftentimes you'll see that sitting in neutral is way over here and then it's hard to get either the left gears or the right gears. Another thing is when the clutch is out of adjustment caused by maybe a broken tube in the tunnel, it's hard to get it into fourth and fifth gear. Very, very difficult. And that is because the tube has moved over and the bottom of the shifter is hitting the tube, disallowing you to get into those gears. I'm looking at the temperature gauge on this car. It's very, very reasonable. 
the 7576 models run a lot hotter as per the factory but usually the temperature gauge on an air-cooled car is not something to so worry about like you would on an air-cooled car notice the voltmeter when I step on and step off it drops down they wired the voltmeter to the brake lights and the brake light circuit and you can see it's charging now if it goes over 14 you've got a problem that could boil the acid out of the battery but stepping on it and the needle diving is no big thing that's just par for the course because again they're on the same circuit but this car is charging correctly 13.6 13.8 maybe I do and they drove so perfectly. If you notice the tachometer bouncing up and down as you drive, the first thing you would check is not the tachometer but the points and condenser. Dirty points cause the tachometer to bounce up and down and that is really an easy fix. shatter in the clutch which is good as I let off slowly just a delightful car as a 914 is when it's in good condition too many people drive these cars that are not in good condition and they really suffer and they don't even realize that the car is not in good condition they think that's the way it's supposed to be and I feel badly for them because they really don't know and I hope that this video has helped you know what a 914 should drive like and so that you can make yours this good and have a lot more fun and get a lot more pleasure out of your car and we're back at Automobile Atlanta again. George Hussey, Dr. 914, thanks for watching.